So welcome back. So now that we have the installation running on Windows, let's do the same for the Mac. It's uh, fairly simple on the Mac as well. First of all, if we're talking um, the WebStorm part, it's just download the installer from WebStorm, just like I showed in the Windows machine, and just install it. And if you can't find it, it's just Google WebStorm like this, and you'll be told where to download WebStorm. You will be asked to download it here, and you'll it'll give you a file. And you'll just install it pretty much. And like I said on the Windows video, if you are a student, you can actually go in and ask for a license uh, by applying to actually get a free version as long as you're a student. It's only for academic use, but that's a way to use um, the, the WebStorm IDE. And if you are not a student, you can also download it and you'll get 30 day trial. It'll all be explained when you install it. So that's simple. Now we need to install Node.js and that's simple as well. We just Go into Node.js org and we press the download button here and we just open the package that we download. It'll pop up here and it'll just, we'll say continue, we'll say continue. Oh, we need to read the license, right? <clears throat> yes, I agree. Where do you want to put it? I just want to put it here. Installation type, nothing there. And I put in my password here to get the installation and the installation starts. And I already installed my node, so let's see if I actually destroy something here. That could be sad so now it's it's just installing while I'm here I'm going to open a terminal like this I just press command space and I can write terminal to actually find my terminal here to to get started and it pops up with something like this so what I want to do is just try to write node and there you should actually get into a dialog you can also write node dash dash version and then you can also see that node is actually running right now um, I'm on an old version, so I'll just switch. Um, use is it six? What's the version right now? Six nine five. There we go. Now I'm using that version. Um, this is the LTS, and there's also a current one. This is the one we recommend for most users. Uh, they recommend for most users, and it's just a more stable version, right? So now we have Node installed. Next step: install the CLI tool. Let's do that. We scroll down to his guide here again. Uh, installation. First of all, we have to run the npm installed with the CLI part here. So I'll let that run. Installation is done. And the reason that we only see a small amount of um, packages here that I pulled down is because I already had the version, so it doesn't show everyone. Okay, so now that is installed. Now we have the CLI installed. So let's just try the next step here as well. First of all, let's find a folder. I'm just going to go to documents. I'm going to go to work and I'm going to be here and make directory called, no, I'm not going to make a directory of course because we're going to build a new course planner here. So I'm going to write new ng new project just like we did on the Windows machine and I'm going to write course planner 2. There we go. I'll let it install again. It'll take a bit of time, just like on the Windows machine. I'll get back to you when it's done. So here it's downloading the packages. Don't be stressed out. It, it will take a bit of time. If you by mistake shut this down, you can always write ng in it, like I explained in the Windows video. Or you can uh, write, I don't want to do that right now. Let me just shut it down. I want to go into Course Planner here. Course Planner 2. And then I'll do an ng in it. And here it'll actually try and reinstall everything. You could also do an npm install, and that'll also try to reinstall everything. So if you did press Control, uh, sorry, Command C or Control C, sorry, to actually shut down the process, you can do it with these commands to get your installation done. And now we can write ng serve. Again, it's all in the guide on the page, and um, it says it's already in use. And that is actually because right now I'm running over here. Let's shut that down. Let's try ng serve again. So if you get this port is already in use, it's because something is wrong, you're already using port 4200 that this ng uh, product wants to use. So now it seems to be up and running, should be running on localhost 4200, let's try that out, oh I pressed the wrong key, stupid me, let's try that out, I'll just copy this URL, I'll go back to the browser and I'll paste 4200 in just to see if it works. And that's pretty much it. We've all been running on the Mac as well. And now I'll stay on the Mac. And whenever I feel there's something I need to explain on the Windows, I'll switch. So see you next time when we'll start using this new setup we just made. Have fun.